Matthew chapter 12 verse 27. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 27. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, whom do you, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come, has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me and he who doesn't gather with me scatters abroad. And we're going to talk about today by the Spirit. Uh, our church Sunday every month focuses more on seeing people experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit, experience the reality of the Holy Spirit. And we must understand we live in a in two kingdoms right now. The kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. They exist simultaneously in this world. That's why many times we feel heaviness. We see the casualty of this war that's going on in this kingdom. We see sickness, we see disease, we see natural disasters, we see hurt, we see abuse, we see stuff that's racism we see a lot of things that are that very very hurtful and very painful even in our nation right now a lot of division a lot of name calling a lot of hate that exists all of that is actually byproduct of a war that's going on in the spiritual realm between two kingdoms the Bible says that Satan is the prince of the air. He controls the airways. He controls that, that things from heaven, the kingdom of heaven will not infiltrate and fill this earth. And so he wants to block that. A lot of times you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and actually you are rightly so because there is a spiritual war that's going on. But the good part is that we are on the winning side. But whether we are on the winning side or not, we still have a fight to fight. And so I want to let you know today that this story begins, the story that I read to you, you probably have heard, it starts like this, that Jesus went to one particular place and there was a man, it says in verse 22, they brought to him a man who was demon possessed, blind and mute and he healed him so that the blind and mute man both spoke and saw. Now the Bible says they brought to Jesus a man who was demon possessed. It doesn't tell us that he acted like demon possessed. The Bible doesn't say he was shaking and baking. The Bible doesn't say he was rolling on the floor and saliva was coming out. The Bible doesn't say that he was acting violent. It only says about why he was demon possessed and the signs of demon possession was his blindness and the fact that he was completely mute. Now these are physical infirmities. These are physical restrictions that person has in their physical body. But Jesus knew that behind his blindness and behind his muteness was an evil spirit. And the Bible says that he was demonized. He was demons controlled two parts of his physical body. It was his sight and it was his speech. And Jesus, it says in here that he healed that man, meaning he removed the evil forces behind his problem and then his eyes started to see and his mouth began to speak. Now it's a phenomenal miracle. And by the grace of God, we've seen things in this house, in this church, but we've seen people who had one particular gentleman who had leukemia for two and a half years and he came for prayer for healing during prayer God delivered him from an evil spirit and his his blood was completely healed the cancer in the blood was completely healed he came back two years later with three different medical reports of completely healed from leukemia this stuff exists let's put our hands together for the Lord two weeks ago a young a lady shared here how she had sleep apnea for for some time and she came here for prayer for sleep apnea during prayer and evil spirit like the bible talks about came out of her it was violent it was crazy he the demon even spoke that he was trying to destroy her when the evil spirit was kicked out the lady went back home never used the sleep apnea machine again and it's been now over a year and a half or two years and she's completely healed from sleep apnea Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. Some of you, some of you listen to me like you see this every single day. <laughs> Gotta be a little bit more excited, amen. And so we see in this verse, this is the Bible. 
this is in red meaning Jesus kind of spoke this stuff where Jesus came and this man had a physical problem but behind this physical problem was a spiritual force and he removed the spiritual force and the physical problem was gone and so I want to just kind of give a little little teaching right now on on this topic and we're gonna tie it all to the power of the Holy Spirit if you are taking notes I want you to write this down what demons do we know demons they're they're part of the Satan's gang because Satan can't be in all places at once so he uses his his minions to do his dirty work and they're called demons unclean spirits familiar spirits um, uh, they're called uh, with other names but pretty much the same thing they have different ranks they have different uh, powers and they some of them occupy regions some of them just kind of run around and give people small little problems and some of them have bigger responsibilities but the list that I'm going to give you is actually I didn't compile that I just copied it from Derek Prince and so he's the one that did the research and so demons what they do is number one they entice their goal is to entice people into behavior that will compromise their consciousness and ruin their testimony in Jesus their second goal is to harass people not just unbelievers but even believers to harass number three is to torture people a lot of people who get attacked by demons they live in torment and if you see these signs there is a high chance where the things you're facing are not are not normal they're demonic it doesn't necessarily mean you have a demon living inside of you but you might have one that's attacking you and that has glued himself to you and today you can be free in the power name of Jesus amen so demons they entice they harass they torture number four is they compel meaning they push somebody they try to push somebody I know we we make fun of people who in our culture say things like devil made me do it but in reality the devil does compel people he does drive people he, he's not a holy spirit he doesn't draw he drives he pushes he's forceful and the bible says the the, the works of the flesh are you know violence that that's part of him he's not gentle he's rough satan also or demons they also enslave this represents addictions addictions to gambling addictions to pornography addictions to video games addictions to to stealing ship uh, shoplifting addiction to lying addiction to food more like a um, lesser danger addiction but some people have that and so whatever addiction anything that represents bondage you can be pretty sure the demons have their fingerprints all over and demons cause addictions they defile they deceive and last one is something that we've read right now is they attack physical body their goal is to attack also physical body deceive um, defile hurt torment harass we live in this world right now whether you're aware of it or not you are in a spiritual battle you are in a spiritual war and devils they use four main things that they can attack and they could use to advance his kingdom one of them is places there are certain places where demons exist for example houses that could be haunted or places where somebody committed suicide demons actually can live in that place you will move in there and stuff will start happening to your family nightmares some people experience divorce problem with sicknesses because they move to a place where demons live you may say that's ah, bizarre that's not that's not weird yeah same thing happens to churches when we pray for church right now we pray Holy Spirit to be here what happens we have testimonies of people stepping in here and they felt this something lifted off of me what happened you step into a place where God's angels are here God's spirit is here this is a holy ground now God lives in us but God also can occupy places he occupied Ark of the Covenant he occupied the Temple of Solomon where he actually made his presence rest there spiritual world can rest in certain places and so we encourage you when you move into a new place pray for your house dedicate your house to the Lord if you have some virgin oil or maybe oil that's not virgin whatever um, put it over the doorposts of your house dedicate your house to God so that when you sleep you don't have nightmares so that your kids don't wake up screaming but that there is peace in that home and there is blessing in that home can somebody say amen, amen. the number two thing that the demons love to occupy is people and they love to attack others through people there are people who are demon possessed 
and so deep in the devil listen very carefully that if you come in contact with them they'll mess you up now legally speaking you have more because you have God in you legally speaking but practically speaking it's not the fact that God is bigger in you it's the fact that they are deeper in the lesser kingdom than you are in the greater kingdom and though the kingdom you are a part of is greater because you are not deep in that kingdom as they are in their kingdom sometimes you come in contact with them and they affect you sometimes you meet with people and you felt like somebody sucked life out of you toxic people like I call them emotional vampires <laughs> They suck life out of you. You're mad after that. You're like, huh, man, these people, if you give them enough freedom, they, they'll suck the air out of the world. And some of these people, they actually have demonic torments on your life. You come in contact with them and you start feeling that. And there are people in your life you met who carry so much God's love and peace. You meet with them. You're at the worst point of your life. After that, you walk out. They're like, man, somebody just pulled me out of all of that. Why? Because the same way people can carry the Spirit of God and pull you out, people carry demonic powers and can pull you down. And so my goal is not to run from bad people. I want to be deeper in Jesus than any witch is in her witchcraft. I want to be deeper in the Holy Spirit than any warlock is in his occultic practices. Can somebody say amen? That the devil has to be warded in coming in contact with me and you. Why? Because our roots are deep and they're touching the living water. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and say, get deeper in the Lord. Another thing that the enemy can use to, to affect and touch us, and most of us, we learn this in our home group right now, is objects. Objects. Now, we know the Bible that God transfers his power through objects. The rod of Moses became a tool in God's hands. We know that the river of Nile, that the, the river of Jordan was used to heal Naaman. We know the pool of Bethesda, the water was there was used to heal people and people whoever jumped in first was healed. We know one time Jesus spit on one guy and the saliva was used, God used it to heal that person. Now I don't believe that like God wants us to go around spitting on people. But I'm not gonna lie to you. I'd rather have Jesus spit on me than Judas kiss me. Come on somebody, amen. I'm like Jesus, if that's gonna get me healed, oh, take it on. I'm, I'm ready. So in our church we don't practice uh, spitting um, and stuff and so but God can use even somebody's belt. The Bible says the belt from the Paul's hand and the handkerchief that he wiped his sweat. Somebody would take that and place on the sick people and the sick people would be healed and devils will come out of people. The Bible says that one woman came and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. You know that that part collected the most dust. It was the dirtiest part of his garment because in those days the streets were not as clean as now and their garments were actually touching the floor and she touched the, the bottom of his coat and the scripture says the issue she had for 12 years completely stopped. That means clothes can transfer power. Objects can transfer power. So we know anointing oil as Christians we pray with anointing oil. Now we know there's no power in oil but power can flow through oil. Amen. Same thing happens with the demonic. There are things that can destroy your life that you bring into your home that have demons attached to them. Dream catchers, voodoo dolls, charms that you pick up on Indian reservations or somewhere in Africa or in Mexico or in Russia or in the Ukraine where they sell them and they offer this. They say, if you wear this, it'll help you to get married. If you wear this, you'll get rich. If you have this, if you put this over the door in your house, your house will no longer be haunted. The very thing is actually an invitation in the spiritual world that says, demons, come, <laughs> come and attack. And people put those things in their cars and then they wonder like, why is this car keep getting a flat tire? Why is there Christmas lights on the dashboard? <laughs> Why is the car keeps dying? I've met people and prayed for people who have dream catchers in their cars and they got a car straight from a dealer and the car has problems every single day. Because those things are, have demons attached to them. And so my goal is not to walk around being scared of everything, but also God doesn't want you to be an idiot. If somebody offers it to you something and says this is a charm, you say I am highly and favor blessed. 
Charms are not needed in here, okay? The Holy Ghost lives inside of me. This is, this is my favorite charm. <laughs> if you got horror books in your house, I don't care if you're obsessed with that stuff, or you got demonic books about witchcraft and occult in your house, I want to even if you're not a believer, why do you need the devil to have you on his GPS? Like I, I told my home group, if I would not be a Christian, let's just say something would happen. There's one thing I would never do <laughs> is, is, is hook up with the demons. There's one thing I know about it. If, if something would happen, I would, be, I would never want to have anything to do with the widget boards and all this stuff. Why? That stuff, I don't care. You say, but I'm just curious. You know what? You can hold a python out of curiosity. He doesn't care that you're curious. Hyenas, like you come up and pat a hyena and say, I just, I just want to take a selfie. Hyena doesn't say, oh yeah, let, let, me, let me just be a nice pet since you're curious. The spiritual world doesn't care that you're curious. It just attacks. That's all. So I want to encourage each one of you, remove garbage from your home. Remove garbage from your cars. Remove stuff that is demonic. Even if you, uh, maybe out of curiosity, maybe you don't find yourself to be a Christian. Listen, you still don't want that junk in your life. You want God's blessing on your life. And you want God's protection. Can somebody say amen? And objects also mean cars. You can have a car and I, in this book, and I'm not going to read it to you, but I, I wrote a story about a car. They called it um, Little Bastard. Um, poor Spider. Where a race car was being used by one race driver. And everybody in Hollywood told him they had a weird feeling about the car. Which is weird because they're Hollywood stars. And they had more sensitivity about these things that some Christians do. And they told this race driver, they said, listen, sell the car and don't, don't drive it. Instead, what he decided to do is to drive that car and race it. He died in a car crash. The car was broken into pieces and sold to different places. Every place the pieces of this car went, somebody either died or became handicapped from the pieces from the car that was sold. Lastly, they collected all the pieces together. The guy who was transporting the car, the car rode on him and killed him. The stuff that happened is crazy and you can, you can read this on uh, there's, there's studies that's been done not just about this car but there are things that honestly especially those of us who buy cars from auction like or you buy used cars from somebody you never know what they did in that so my practice is this when I get a car I lay hands on the engine. I say Lord this thing ain't gonna blow up it's not gonna stop working I lay hands on the car and I just say Lord I bless this car it's gonna get me from point A to point B it's not gonna leak it's not gonna blow up and it's not going to drive me to my funeral. Amen. And it's not going to cost me money on repairs more than I bought for it. Especially if they're German cars. You need to like special prayer for that. <laughs> Maybe even take them through prayer line or something. Or if they have over a hundred thousand miles. This is when you need the pastor to pray for your car. But the point being is that there are spiritual forces that can use objects. The fourth thing that the spiritual power flows through is animals. Is animals. In the Bible we see God using a donkey to speak to a prophet. We see in the Bible that God commanded a fish to swallow a man and vomit him out. In the Bible we see God commanded ravens who somebody said ravens don't even share their food with their children and they shared steak with the prophet. That's supernatural. Where the ravens went against their nature, God used animals to impact people. The opposite is also true. Demons can infiltrate animals. The Bible says demons enter 2,000 pigs and what those pigs did? Committed suicide. Spiritual world. Animals respond to spiritual world. Like my dog senses spiritual things. Especially when people come for home group <laughs> or people are in the driveway and he already smells. There's a spiritual, spiritual atmosphere is changing. A lot of animals can sense spiritual things and so another thing I um this may sound crazy for some of you but I know we live in America and we're, we love animals amen okay second service will have more animal lovers <laughs> but um I regularly pray for my dog lay hands on his head when he is sick or something because uh, their bills are more expensive than ours and so and I just speak I speak God's blessing why because I don't want this thing at night to come in and choke me or kill me or something and so and um you need to understand the animal world can be used by the spiritual world. It happens, we see this in the Bible and we see this in practice and in real life. And so with that said, 
I want us to look at in the conclusion about the story. One thing I want you to see here is this. Is when Jesus cast out a demon out of a man and the man begins to speak and the man begins to hear. This is what happens. Pharisees come back and they say this against Jesus. They didn't have a problem with deliverance. They had a problem with the way he was doing deliverance, when he was doing deliverance and how he was doing deliverance. This is what I find out about people who criticize deliverance. They actually don't have a problem with demons coming out. They just know how the demons shouldn't be coming out and shouldn't be coming out. And they're experts in deliverance having done none. It's kind of like me criticizing a heart surgeon just because I watched a movie where somebody did a heart surgery in the movie. And I'm an expert now. And so don't become an expert if you've never done it. But Jesus in here, he corrects them. He says, guys, that's not how, you, you don't know what you're talking about. And so their argument was this. He says, we know why he casts out demons. It's because devil has a civil war. And Jesus happens to be on the other side of the civil war the devil has. And that's why he's casting out the other demons. Now, I want to let you know this. If demons would have a civil war, they wouldn't have power, energy, resources to fight us. They would be fighting each other. There will be no sickness on this earth. There will be no hurt on this earth. There will be no abuse, no racism and no hate. Why? Because demons will be too busy destroying each other. They wouldn't have time for us. So Jesus looks at them and he says, you guys are a bunch of idiots. He says, you see this guy is blind. People are deaf. People are dying. He says, and you think Satan is fighting each other? We would not have this evil if he would be fighting each other. He would self-destruct. So my point number one, devil doesn't have a civil war. If he would, he wouldn't be your problem. If devil would have a civil war, he would never attack humanity. Because when you're fighting yourself, when you're fighting each other, you don't have time to fight somebody else. Point number two is that Jesus said, not only devil doesn't have a civil war, he says, and we read, he says, if a strong man walks into somebody's house and he is stronger than the guy who controls the house, he said, the stronger man will bind that man and plunder everything that he has. So Jesus is in here talking about himself and he says this, he says, I'm the boss, hashtag boss. He says, the reason why I cast out devils, I'm God. You know, Jesus could sneeze on the devil and he'll run. He's so powerful. So number two, Jesus is all powerful. And Jesus and Satan don't have a fight. It's kind of like a mosquito and a tank. That's not a fight. That's not fair. Devil has a disadvantage against Jesus. He doesn't stand a chance. The same way a mosquito does not stand a chance against a tank. There is no way in this world the battle, the battle is not equal. But what I want to point on toward the conclusion of this message is this part. It's not the fact that Jesus cast out the devil by his power or by his name or by the fact that he was God. I want you to see this that Jesus said in chapter 12 verse 28. So he lets people know I'm God. The devil doesn't have a war within his kingdom. If I cast out demons by the spirit of God. Jesus was telling Pharisees, I don't cast out demons because I'm God. I cast out demons relying on the spirit of God. I could cast them out. I literally could come in and they already are hurt and tormented by my presence but I don't refer to my divinity to expel them. Because people who will follow me don't have that divinity in them to overcome the devil. He says, every deliverance I have done, I have done by the Spirit of God. And this same Spirit, I make it available to all my followers so that though they're not God, they don't have a virgin birth, they're not omnipresent, omniscient and omnipotent, they are human beings but the same Spirit I used to cast the devil, I gave it to them. That gives me hope. That deliverance is not done by just the power of Jesus, it's by the Spirit of Jesus. Please understand, to be free, there is no magic in freedom. You know some people think if I just repeat the name of Jesus, 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 Jesus 20 times the devil will come out. Jesus' name is not a magic word. Demons don't come out because there's magic words. They come out because there is power. 
and that power is a person of the Holy Spirit and Jesus made it very clear to Pharisees he said I could come and sneeze on the devil and he will run but I don't cast them out because I am God I cast them out because the Spirit of God is using me right now so I want you to write this down we get free by the Spirit of God we stay free by the Spirit of God and we bring freedom to others by the Spirit of God you can get free in your own life by the Spirit of God the Spirit of God already lives inside of you and the Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke the Spirit of God Jesus says he anointed me so that I could break the the prison doors Jesus did not need to be free on his own but we many times need to be free and I can tell you one thing is that what really sets you free is not a preacher it's the Holy Spirit in that preacher and you happen to have the same Holy Spirit who can set you free as well by the Spirit of God this week and I was reading because I had a different message when I was reading this verse it just it captured my heart that deliverance and freedom is not a, a system it's, it's not a, a particular secret there, there is there is really no it could be done there, there are people like Catholics Catholic priests that do exorcism and they don't follow our pattern there are people like Bob Larson he does a deliverance by a different pattern people like in the Ukraine or people in Africa or some of the ministers that you know they follow different pattern but there is one thing that in every deliverance ministry exists it's the Spirit of God they can be Baptists but if the Spirit of God is moving there people will be delivered and so you might not know all of the right steps you might not know all of the depth about the, where your demon came from how that he entered we don't know about this blind man how that demon entered him how many demons were there we just know one thing Holy Ghost came in stuff got cleaned out I believe in understanding the spiritual world I believe in understanding the open roots and all of this stuff that's important but none of that will get you closer to your freedom if the Holy Ghost is not involved by the Spirit of God by the Spirit of God by the Spirit of God I cast out devils by the Spirit of God I heal the sick by the Spirit of God I bring people to salvation by the Spirit of God I bring freedom to the captives can somebody give God praise right now in this house hallelujah by the Spirit of God I want to tell you something you have everything you need to be free if you're a Christian you have everything you need to be free it's the Holy Spirit living inside of you right now he can set you free develop relationship with him before and I wrote this down in order to have by the Spirit you must first have in the Spirit Jesus wasn't used by the Spirit to bring freedom he first was in the Holy Spirit maybe today you find bondage around you maybe you find bondage within you I want to tell you something focus your life more on developing relationship in the Holy Spirit because it's by the Holy Spirit freedom comes to your life Jesus had Spirit of God arrest on him because he rested in him develop relationship with Holy Spirit people people can help you but only Holy Spirit will deliver you we had people who even come here right now from another state Maryland there's a lady here that's from Maryland came for freedom to receive freedom and I want to tell you something that freedom comes by the Holy Spirit you might not know what kind of evil forces are attacking you what's going on in the spiritual world if you know the Holy Spirit and you hold his hand very tight and say Holy Spirit with you I want to conquer this with you I want to overcome this you will begin to walk in freedom you will begin to stay in freedom and you will begin to see how God uses you to bring freedom to others maybe you're trapped in the same sin today you keep falling into the same bondage and you've tried the 12 step program six step program one step program no step program and maybe you're disappointed in all of the steps I understand you but I can tell you one thing there is not a step there is a person his name is the Holy Spirit and Jesus said it's the person he used the person that used him to bring freedom to the blind people today the Holy Spirit is in this room he wants to bring freedom to you but most importantly he wants to be your friend he wants to be in relationship with you so that you can stay free because many people get free and in this verse Jesus explains it later he says when demons come out and the house is clean 
and is swept and the demons go to dry places and they bring some other more evil spirits and they come back and because the person got delivered by someone but they never had the spirit fill them they, they didn't live by the spirit see and some of you maybe you just want somebody to pray for you and that is important we are here for that but I tell you that everything you need you already have inside of you it's called the Holy Spirit and today we can cultivate relationship we can get the devil out we can keep him out and bring freedom to other people by the Spirit of God come on somebody are you with me I want to take a moment today to pray that you get to know Holy Spirit better because in Him is freedom and in Him is deliverance. Secondly, we want to take a moment today to pray for those people who maybe would like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You may say, but I, I need freedom. You need to be filled first. Because when you are filled, stuff begins to come out. Uh, D.L. Moody said to his students, he says, how do you get the air out of the cup? And they said, you know, vacuum it out. Another person said, breathe it out. And he says, there's only one way to get all of the air out of the cup. Fill it with water sometimes the best way to get the bad out is to fill yourself with good and clean out fill yourself with holy and when you begin to fill yourself with holy spirit stuff begin to fall out stuff will begin to be broken and then when you say devil get out he leaves because it's not just you saying there's a big holy spirit stand behind you and devil is the mosquito and you're the tank and the chain things changed thank you for watching this content i hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things Click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.